Ayana Koji Kiyotaka is the masterpiece of the White Room and one of the most intelligent characters ever to appear in an anime. A common misconception about Ayana Koji's character is that his overwhelming abilities are solely due to innate talent. However, this is not the case. It's his methodical approach to daily habits and routines that sets him apart. His genetic predisposition merely acted as an additional boost. So, how exactly would Ayana Koji's daily routine for maximum productivity and success look in real life? In this video, I will break down Ayana Koji's daily routine into practical steps that you can adopt today. If you make a commitment to yourself to truly focus and absorb everything this video has to offer, you will never look back. So let's sit up straight, take a deep breath, and lock in for the perfect morning routine. It is absolutely crucial that you get natural light in your eyes within one hour after waking up. Listen carefully, as this will also increase your general level of education. Natural light in the morning is important because of something known as the cortisol pulse. Once every 24 hours, you get a big spike in cortisol, which sets your temperature rhythm, level of alertness and focus, and your mood. You want that cortisol spike to happen as early in the day as possible, to feel motivated throughout the day, and to be able to fall asleep effortlessly in the evening. This is where morning sunlight comes in. Try to get at least 10 minutes of exposure. If you wake up before the sun rises, bright lights will do the trick. While you get your morning sunlight, you also have a good opportunity to drink water and take in electrolytes. This simple but powerful habit should undoubtedly be established in your routine. Upon waking, your body is in a state of dehydration after hours of sleep. Did you know that just by drinking water on an empty stomach, you can increase your metabolic rate by 24%? By increasing your metabolic rate, you are digesting faster and improving your digestive system. In fact, 500 ml of water immediately after waking up has been proven to increase blood flow and make your skin glow while increasing the production of new blood cells. However, your body needs more than just H2O to maintain proper hydration. It relies on certain charged minerals known as electrolytes to regulate the balance of fluids in and out of your cells through a process known as osmosis. That's why I recommend infusing your morning water with slices of citrus fruits or a pinch of Himalayan salt. Now you're ready for physical exercise. Doing your exercise in the morning is the superior choice for multiple reasons. For one, there is a 25% greater drop in blood pressure at night after morning exercise, which activates the parasympathetic nervous system, leading to better sleep. On top of that, you will be way more consistent with your workout as they are done before other commitments can interfere. Which exercises you should do in particular depends on your individual goals. After that, take a cold shower. I know the last thing you want to do in the morning is to get in the cold, but the key is to start slowly from your legs upwards. If you are asking yourself if it's really worth it, let me tell you. Yes, it absolutely is. After you take a cold shower, there is a long arc release of dopamine and epinephrine. These two neurotransmitters will significantly increase your mood and motivation. Exposing yourself to the cold in the morning sets you up for a successful day where you actually feel like doing the hard work. Keep in mind that it can take three to four weeks to adjust to a morning routine, and you need to establish an earlier bedtime if you start waking earlier to fit all these activities into your schedule. If you don't get enough sleep, it can be impossible to make the transition. After this morning routine, you are ready for everything the day throws at you. You probably either go to school, university, or your workplace, so you are pretty restricted in what you can do here. In the evening, it is vital to set the foundations for your next day by eliminating morning decision-making. We have a limited amount of willpower and decision-making ability, and too many decisions in the morning slow us down and drain our brain for the rest of the day. Concretely, that could mean laying out your outfit for the next day and packing your lunch in the evening. Next, if you feel like you're not getting tired, or if you miss the cold shower in the morning, take a warm bath or shower. Warm baths, showers, or even saunas are beneficial because after the exposure, your body temperature falls below baseline to cool you off. This mimics the body's natural sleep cycle and signals to your brain that it's time to wind down and prepare for restorative sleep. Moreover, Ayanokochi would undoubtedly incorporate yoga nidra into his evening routine. Why? Because of yoga nidra's extremely potent ability to induce a state of deep relaxation, which has even been shown to enhance sleep efficiency and increase the duration of slow wave sleep, essential for physical and mental rejuvenation. Also, avoid viewing bright lights, especially bright overhead lights. Relying on desk lights in the evening will be beneficial for sleep. Additionally, get evening sunlight, just like in the morning. This serves as an anchor point for your inner clock. If you are asking yourself how our brain can differentiate between morning and evening sunlight, it has to do with the particular wavelengths of light present in the morning versus evening. Evening. When it is time to go to bed, keep your room as dark as possible. If you can't get your room completely dark, eye masks have been shown to be beneficial. Your sleep time should enable you to do your morning routine while not being sleep deprived. 
However, the most important thing to keep in mind is that consistency is everything. It is better to always sleep eight hours than to sometimes sleep eight hours and sometimes 10 hours. If you keep consistent sleep and wake times, you synchronize your circadian rhythm, which will make the sleep you get more restorative. The key is to sleep harder, not more. Lastly, I recommend putting medical tape on your mouth before sleep. If you sometimes breathe through your mouth, nasal breathing is inherently more efficient and conducive to restful sleep. Mouth breathing can create vibrations in the soft tissues of the throat, leading to snoring and potential interruptions in sleep quality. By preventing mouth breathing with medical tape, you will experience a reduction in snoring and a more uninterrupted night's rest.